Hello friends, in my this video, I am going to discuss channel length modulation, which is very important part in semiconductor device and circuit paper as well as VLSI paper in our university or basically in most of the universities in which if you give these two papers SDC and VLSI, COD you can expect that uh, one question will come that may be two marks or three marks or five marks whatever. Okay, so let us start. So you know that in saturation region the drain current expression for the MOSFET is given by ID equal to half into mu n into COX into W by L into VGS minus VT whole square, right? From the expression, already we have derived this also. If you don't know the derivation, please go through the link even in the description. I will post the link of my previous video where I have discussed the derivation of this uh, drain current in case of linear region and saturation region, okay? So basically, if you observe the drain current expression, you can see that ID is independent of VDS. That is, drain current is independent of drain to source potential. Okay. So that means we can consider this ID as a perfect current source. That means constant current it is providing. Right. But see here, that's what I have written here. ID is perfect current source that should get constant because it is independent of VDS. Although you, if you change VGS, it will change. But now I am changing only VDS and with respect to VDS, ID is constant in saturation region, right? That's what I am telling. Now, but this statement that is ID is perfectly acting like a perfect current source that is constant current it is providing uh, with respect to change in VDS, it is not going to true, not 100 plus 100% true. Right? That's what I have written here, not entirely correct. This statement is not entirely correct. And why is that so? I am going to discuss. See, before that, just a quick recap of the physical structure of the MOSFET. That is, this is P-type substrate or body is here. I am considering NMOS. Same concept you can apply for PMOS also. So here N plus oil is drain. Here N plus oil is source. So source is generally we... Uh, connect the source with the ground. In drain, we apply positive potential. In gate, also we apply positive potential, which must be greater than Vt to make the channel form and uh, to start the conduction of current in between source and drain. But uh, you know from my previous video that although uh, channel is not formed uh, in case of VGS less than VT due to subthreshold conduction, there is a uh, flow of current when VGS is less than VT. Now, for the time being, don't cons consider that. So, basically, this is basic physical uh, diagram of uh, MOSFET, uh, of in, in, in MOSFET, that is in channel MOSFET. Now, see, suppose VDS, okay, that is drain to source potential you are increasing, okay. So, drain to source potential increasing means only drain potential I am increasing because source is grounded. So, VDS means VD only, right. That's what I have written here. If VDS is increased, what will happen? Drain potential will increase, okay. So, as VDL, VD will increase, now see what will happen. You just consider the physical structure. See, drain is connected with the positive potential VD, right? And the body is connected to where? Body, generally we short circuit the body terminal with the source, right? In MOSFET, uh, in NMOS or PMOS, whatever you consider. So as we short circuit the body and source, so body is also basically grounded. So now you just consider in the drain, in the N type region, we are providing positive potential but in the p-type body we are providing zero potential that means in this case in this pn junction the n-type part is at higher potential compared to p-type part so obviously this pn junction which is formed in between in between drain and body is basically in reverse bias correct or not correct right so as VDS increases, now what will happen? Now you are increasing VD, that means drain potential you are increasing. That means the potential difference in between N and P you are increasing in reverse bias. So what will happen? In reverse bias, if you increase the potential in between P and junction, the barrier potential, sorry, the depletion region which is formed in between P and junction will become thicker and thicker, right? So basically what will happen that the PN junction which is formed in between this uh, 
drain and body will uh, the will become thicker and thicker if you keep on increasing the drain potential which is connected to the in type portion of this pn junction okay so that's what I have written here. If Vds is increased, that implies Vd is increasing because Vs is zero. So as a result, more diverse bias the uh, jun junction will get, and as diverse bias will become more and more, the depletion region will be wider. So wider depletion region. As a result, what will happen? See, this is the final structure. You know that always in between source and body, you consider or channel and body you consider or drain and body you consider always there is a what depletion region right now what will happen already i have discussed the, this depletion region concept while i was discussing the capacitance in mosfet if you want to check you just go through the link given in the description okay so basically see always there is a continuous depletion region in between source uh, channel and drain and body fine but as drain and body is getting more and more reverse bias, so in the drain and body junction side, the reverse bias uh, depletion region will become thicker and thicker. So that see here in this part, the depletion region is thicker compared to the depletion region in between source and body. As a result, what will happen? As the depletion region is becoming thicker and thicker, obviously it will not allow the channel, so the channel length will decrease as the depletion region between drain and body is becoming thicker and thicker. So as a result, the channel length will reduce and that is nothing but channel length modulation. Modulation means modification on some particular value. Like in analog communication, you might have studied amplitude modulation. That is amplitude of the carrier signal will vary according to the message signal. Similarly here, the length of the channel will vary according to the applied VDS. Okay, if VDS is increased, VD will increase. If VD increases, more diverse bias, more diverse bias means depletion region will in between drain and body will become wider. As the depletion region become wider, channel length must has to be reduced. As the channel length reduced, that is nothing but modulation of the channel length and the modulation is controlled by applied VDS that is drain to source potential. Okay. So see, initially consider the length, the initially channel length was this much, that is cap denoted by capital L. But now, due to increment of the VDS in the saturation region, consider this, I am considering the saturation region, okay? What is happening? The delta L amount of reduction in channel is there, and now the channel is confined in between this portion, okay? Initially, it was confined up to this region, okay? So, now you consider this expression id equal to half into mu n into cox into w by l into vgs minus bt whole square as a result of channel length modulation l is decreasing as l is decreasing what will happen id will increase right so this is what the effect of the channel length modulation that is although from the expression we are getting that the drain current is independent of applied VDS, that is, it is acting like a perfect current source. The MOSFET is acting like a perfect current source in saturation region, but it is not happening. Due to channel length modulation, ID is changing, and why channel length modulation is generated? Due to changing or increment in applied drain to source potential. So basically, in simple words, ID is no longer remain constant with respect to VDS in saturation region. Now it is variable with respect to applied VDS. Okay. Now, what is the next step? Determine the mathematical expression or relationship in between drain current and applied drain to source uh, potential in saturation region. Right. So basically, ID will be equal to half into mu n into COX into W by L into VGS minus PT whole square. Same expression I have taken, that is MOSFET drain current expression in case of saturation region. Now, due to channel length modulation, delta L amount of reduction in channel length is there. So now the length becomes L minus delta L. So the drain current expression is ID equal to half into mu n into COX into W by L minus delta L into VGS minus PT whole square. 
Now take L common and you will get ID equal to half into mu n into COX into W by L into 1 minus delta L by L into VGS minus VT whole square. Now as delta L and L are very small, so we will try to implement this small approximation of uh, binomial. So what we will do, we will take this factor in the uh, numerator and it will become ID equal to half into mu n into c x into w by l into 1 minus delta l by l whole to the power minus 1 into vgs minus vt whole square. Now, use small approximations, small approximation of binomial that is minus or to the power minus will uh, come to this part and sorry, sorry, yeah. So basically what will happen this uh, to the power minus will come here and it will become plus 1. So ID you will get as half into mu n into COX into W by L into 1 plus delta L by L into VGS minus VT whole square, right? Now see this term delta L by L. Delta L, now you just don't consider the next line, consider the mouse pointer, uh, observe the mouse pointer. So delta L that is change, that is decrease in channel length obviously proportional to VDS, right? As VDS increases, more uh, the depletion region in between drain and body will become wider. So as a result, channel length will reduce. So the reduction of the channel length that is delta L is proportional to VDS. So delta L by L is proportional to VDS by L. Just I have divided L in the right hand side and left hand side. So now you just use proportionality constant C and you will get delta L by L is equal to C into VDS by L. Now C by L will become lambda. Just consider another constant that is lambda is equal to C by L and you can get delta L by L is equal to lambda into VTS. Okay. So basically put that. So the new, uh, so instead of delta L by L, substitute lambda into VDS and new drain, drain current expression you will get as ID equal to half into mu n into COX into W by L into VTS minus VT whole square into 1 plus lambda VTS. Okay. This is very important. Often numerical comes from this formula, they will give you the lambda value or uh, what type of numerical may come later I will show. Just consider this formula. You must have to remember the derivation as well as the formula because uh, sometimes they may give the derivation, sometimes they may give the numericals based on this formula. Okay. Now, two important point. See, this expression we got delta L by L is equal to lambda into VDS, right? That's what I have written here, delta L by L is equal to lambda into VDS. Delta L by L will be unitless because both the numerator and denominator units are of length, they will cancel each other. So lambda will be nothing but the unit will be volt inverse because if you cross multiply, VDS will come in the uh, denominator and you will get lambda is equal to, the unit of lambda is basically volt inverse, right? That is unit of voltage. Uh, inverse that, that then you will get the uh, unit of lambda. Okay, this is also called channel length modulation factor. Now, you just uh, try to understand that the, uh, suppose I give you a MOSFET, I tell you the specifications, then with the core concept of semiconductor device, if you want to calculate the value of lambda, that is very tedious job, very much complicated. So, what scientists do? They calculate the value of lambda experimentally. Very easy. How? First, suppose your MOSFET is in saturation region. You have designed your volt, uh, MOSFET. You have provided the voltages in such a way that your MOSFET is operating in saturation region. Now, for a particular VDS, that is, suppose VDS1, you calculate drain current, that's suppose ID1. Then for another VDS in saturation region, suppose VDS2, you calculate ID2, drain current ID2. So, now you take the ratio ID1 by ID2 is equal to simply this term will cancel in the numerator and denominator and you will get ID1 by ID2 equal to 1 plus lambda VDS1 by 1 plus lambda VDS2. From there you know ID1, you know ID2, you know VDS1, you know VDS2, you can calculate lambda, right? In your lab also in cadence you have to calculate the channel length modulation of a 90 nanometer technology NMOS and PMOS in the same fashion, okay? So the formula based on which numerical may come is ID1 by ID2 equal to 1 plus lambda VDS1 by 1 plus lambda VDS2. Experimental way to calculate the channel length modulation factor or lambda, okay? Based on this, let us try to solve one numerical which will be very interesting but very easy. So the question is, 
it is looking bigger but the num numerical the rule you already know the question says that the current in an enhancement mode in most transistor biased in saturation mode that means our formula is applicable right was measured to be 1 milliampere at a drain source drain to source voltage of 5 volt when the drain to source voltage was increased to 6 volt while keeping the gate to source potential or voltage same the new drain current increased to 1.02 milliampere see as it is operating in saturation region so although we should change the although if we change the drain to source potential the drain current should not change but see here from 1 milliampere it is coming to 1.02 milliampere that means they are considering the channel length modulation effect okay now one more thing you can observe that although we are increasing 1 volt from 5 volt to 6 volt although we are increasing but due to channel length modulation little amount of drain current is increasing see from 1 milliampere to 1.02 milliampere that means very small 0.02 milliampere change is there obviously you cannot get very high increment of current by increasing the drain to source potential in saturation region right channel length modulation lambda uh, later you will uh, uh, see that lambda value is very small so basically although due to channel length modulation drain current increases but it never increases in a very high amount that's what i want to show you in this way you should understand or interpret the data given in the question and you will feel happy in solving numericals okay then it is given assume that the drain to source saturation voltage is much smaller than applied drain to source voltage okay so the question is the channel length modulation parameter lambda is how much see here they have given the unit also as i told you lambda unit is volt inverse right so basically try to extract the data from the story they have given lots of stories try to extract the data so vds1 is 5 volt write that PDS1 is 5 volt. Corresponding to that, drain current is 1 milliampere. So, ID1 is 1 milliampere. Next, VDS2 is 6 volt. VDS2 is 6 volt. Next, corresponding to that, drain current is 1.02 milliampere. ID2 is 1.02 milliampere. Now, you calculate what is that ID1 by ID2 is equal to 1 plus lambda VDS1 by 1 plus lambda VDS2. Put the values. ID1 is 1 milliampere. ID2 is 1.02 milliampere, 1 plus lambda into VDS1 is 5 volt, put that 5 volt, and VDS2 is 6 volt, put that 6 volt. Simplify using calculator, very simple, and you will get lambda value that is channel length modulation factor is 0 0.022 volt inverse. Don't forget to write the unit. If you forget to write the unit, your marks can be reduced in our university, VIT university. Okay? So, Sometimes they may not mention the unit also. I hope you have understood how volt inverse unit has came because delta L by L is equal to lambda VDS. Delta L by L, that unit will be cancel each other. And so lambda will be unit of volt inverse. Okay. So this type of numericals you just practice. In Sethra Smith, lots of numericals are there. And how the channel length modulation is happening. Why when we are increasing the VDS in the saturation region, why the uh, channel length is reducing? Because the uh, reverse bias in between drain and body, basically we are increasing while increasing the VDS. As a result, the depletion region in between drain and body is increasing. As a result, channel length is decreasing. You can write the pinch of effect also in saturation region. You can add it here. In Sedra Smith also, they have explained in detail manner. You can follow that book for reference. Okay, so this is all for my this video. Thank you for watching.